in today's video, we are going to work together on the PostgreSQL flexible server database that you can see here with the design and the Terraform code. As a quick reminder, you can use Brembo to design, manage, and deploy all your cloud infrastructures directly on Brembo, either by using Microsoft Azure, AWS, OCI, GCP, or Scaleway. If you work on Azure, for example, same thing with AWS or CI, you can either use resource or data, pin specific versions, and use all of these resources to either build your cloud infrastructure from scratch directly on brand board or managing, for example, this one. This one, I used it directly from the template catalog that you can find here. You can use templates either from Azure, AWS, OCI, GCP, and Scaleway. Here, for example, is Postgre. To use it, simply need to clone the template into a new architecture. Once you have done it, you will have the design and the Terraform code, and as well as all the Terraform files that you can see here. Two golden rules of Rainbow. The first one is if you are used to using Terraform to manage your cloud infrastructures, then everything that Terraform supports, we support it as well on Rainbow. For example, here, if you look at this specific resource, you look at the Terraform code, you open the ID card, and here you can see that we used, for example, variables, and that we use, for example, here, the depends on, which is a meta-argument of Terraform. Speaking about variables, you can directly use variables. So manage and create your variables, either at the organization level, project, environment, or architecture. Here, we have created six variables for this specific architecture. And here you have the name, the scope, the type, the default, and you can also add the description if you want. So here, another golden rule of brain board, this is the second one, is that, for example, here, you can use this resource. To use them very easy, simply need to drag and drop it directly in the design. And as you can see, I don't need to write a single line of Terraform code. It is automatically updated for, for me. So there is a perfect match between the design and the Terraform code. I use the ID card then to be able to configure this specific resource. So here I delete it, and when I delete it, you can see that this resource, the code of this resource, is gone as well. So here I showed you the main.tf. Here, for example, the provider, you can customize it by going here, and then you can write your own custom Terraform block. So here, for example, in terms of backend, what I can show you is that here you simply need to go to data and you can set up your remote backend at two levels, either at the organization level, and you can choose, for example, Azure Blob Storage, Terraform Cloud, Brainbow Backend, for example. This is at the organization level. You can also specify your remote backend per architecture. So here you go to settings and here, it's per architecture and you can set choose for example blob storage per architecture here you have also all the terraform version that you can choose so here we go back to the design speaking about documentation what you can do is that here you can also have your readme so here for example i've written this readme with the description the architecture components and how to deploy this infrastructure so here, once we are good, I will also show you how you can invite all your team members to join the organization, create different teams, create different projects, and set up your cloud credentials and Git credentials as well. So here, members simply need to specify their email address and their roles. Once it's done, they're being invited. Here, you can create different teams. And here, simply need to specify to choose a name, choose the admin, choose the members, and then create different projects. Here, simply need to specify the name again, the teams, and then the environment that you would like to create. This is very useful. Why? Because, for example, when you go back to the design era, you go back here to the architecture selector and you see how you can structure the way you work on Brainboard, for example, with your team by having different projects from Brainboard community to use cases. In each project, you have different environment from there, for example, to, to webinars, and then in each environment, you have different architecture. And today, we are working on this one. Here, what you can do is that you can modify the name of course. You can modify the status from work in progress to locked. You can add the description as well as tags. 
So now that we are done. Here you can decide to do one action, so Terraform commands, either uh, Terraform validate, Terraform plan, Terraform uh, apply or destroy, or you can directly decide to do a pull request. Here, if you want to do a pull request, you can use either a GitHub ADO, Bitbucket or GitLab. What you can do is that you open the Git settings here, and then you simply need to set up your Git credentials for the one that you're using. Here, for example, on Brainboard, I'm using GitLab. You can also set up at the organization level GitHub. And then, I showed you already that Brainboard was a multi-cloud solution by design. Here on Azure, you simply need to configure all of these fields to be able to do the Terraform commands that you want. So here we looked at these resources, this design, all of these Terraform files that you can use, the templates. Of course, if you want to use modules, then you can import all your modules directly, either from the registry, from Git and from files. Once you have done it, you will be able to go here to module and build your own module catalog. For example, here, CosmoDB, let's say that you would like to use it. So first you edit. Here, because it's latest, it's, you don't pin to a specific version. Imagine that, for example, you need to manage this module and keep it updated. Brembo will understand it and will do the work for you and keep this module updated automatically. If you want to use it, it's very easy. You simply need to pin the module and then you can directly use it here, for example. And then the ID count and the Terraform code is automatically written for you. Now we don't need it. So what we can do now is that we go to the CICD. Here we have two options. Either we want to use a public template that Ultima has created for you, or you want to build your own. Let's say you want to build your own. Azure CICD. You create. Then here, these are all the tasks that you can use. For example, here, the first task will be, for example, a Terraform plan. So here it's called validation. Save and close. Then now what you can do is, for example, here, you want to make sure that this infrastructure respects your budget. So here is cost estimation. Open your key. This is the one. And then here, simply need TLSEC here for security check. Let's say here is ignore failure. Now that you done that, here in the previous video, we showed you how you could use Microsoft Teams directly. But here in this video, I will simply need to use emails. So here it's FinOps team. Here is email, for example, uh, this one. Here is check the cost of the infra. And here is another email. You can also use Slack if you want. So here we'll use another email and here is security team. Here, bring.co and here check the security requirement okay now what we can do here is that we can here do a pull request here it's for documentation purposes you use a GitLab here you use this specific project here for example you say it's Azure infra and here it's here for example for documentation and here is Azure post agree SQL here let's say that you would like a specific team member to be able to give the approval for this task and here you simply need to choose an email address here now what you need to do for example is that you want to provision the infrastructure so provision infrastructure require approval approve email so for example here this person like that it's very quick you used two terraform commands infracost tlsec 
email to notify using member and then git and then once you're done you need to run the pipeline here you will see two things the first one you will see you will look at all the statues of each of each different task here for example is running but here for example is pending and then you look at the output here so we wait a little bit so here as you can see the plan 10 10 resources to add zero to change zero to destroy the lock has already been done for you here now security check you have the results is critical here for example the impact the resolution and then you have for example the documentation so you have the documentation here it gives you a, an insecure example a secure example so now because i notified our team member here they will come to Brandboard, check the output of the security check and then do all the modifications directly on Brandboard. Then here, another team member will come to Brandboard once everything is secure and then push to Git and then another team member will go to Brandboard and do the provisioning, so provision infrastructure directly on Azure. Here you have the status, the ID, the pipeline, where it failed, the workflow, who was the initiator and the date. What you can do here is that once you can have, of course, multiple pipelines, for example, here you can use the drip detection and here you can use the description. So you can describe the, the task and you can schedule to do automated and regular check if you want. So here you have a pipeline for drip detection, you have a pipeline for Azure CI/CD. What you can do here is that you can do the schedule as well, add the description and then you can convert this workflow into a reusable template and then you can find all your templates here. So I hope this video has been useful for you and if you have any questions here you can directly ping us and we are really reactive. You can ping me on LinkedIn as well or, or on YouTube and here if you want to look at our documentation you can look at it as well here. So, have a great day and see you soon on Brandboard.